One of the main topics for my YouTube channel has always been window managers. Since starting the channel, I've probably lived in about 15 different window managers. And there's two or three of those window managers that I've tried that in the back of my mind, I've always known, you know what? I didn't really spend as much time in those window managers as needed. I never really dived as deep into those as I needed to and never really showed you guys on camera the power, the full power of those particular window managers. And one of those that I've always known I got to go back and give a second shot at is Herbst Luft WM, which when I tried it out for the first time a couple of years ago, I thought it was fantastic, but I only lived in it like a week or two. And the reason for that is because I bought a new computer. So I installed Herbs Luft on my old production machine at the time. I bought a new computer, and when I got my new computer in, I distro hopped. I switched Linux distributions, and I also hopped to a different window manager at the time. So, it, you know, I've always known I need to go back and really spend a little more time in Herbs Luft, give it the proper treatment it deserves here on camera, because I... I was really impressed with it. I thought it was one of the best tiling window managers as far as ease of use, as far as getting into. I thought the configuration was just dead simple and it's so easy to get Herbs Luft to do exactly what it is that you want it to do. So let me switch over to my desktop here and I'm going to open up a graphical file manager here. So I'll open up Thunar and the config file for Herbs Luft should be located in .config slash Herbs to Luft WM, and then you should have a file in here called Auto Start, or if you don't, you need to create one. That is your config file. And let me open that config file. You know what? I'm going to open it inside Doom Emacs. So let me open up my Herbs to Luft Auto Start file, and I've got it zoomed way in here so you guys can see. Let me zoom back out a little bit. That's kind of gigantic font there. That's more reasonable. Now, one of the interesting things about Herbs Luft is it's Somewhat similar to BSPWM. Actually, it's similar to BSPWM in a lot of ways. Both Herbs Luft and BSPWM are what I call manual tilers, meaning you decide where the next window is going to open on the screen rather than you have these automatic layouts that are already pre-configured. Now, I prefer the pre-configured layouts of a dynamic tiler. Dynamic tilers include things like DWM, Awesome, Xmonad, Qtile. I prefer those kinds of tiling window managers. That's part of the reason why I never spent that much time in Herbs Luft WM, for example. It's not my kind of window manager. BSPWM is the same. I3 is also the same. Not that there's anything wrong with those. It's just everybody has preferences. I prefer the dynamic tilers. Another similarity of Herbs Luft WM and BSPWM is the fact that their config file is a bash script or a shell script or it, it can actually be anything you want. Most people are going to configure it as a shell script. Most people configure BSPWM as a shell script. Same thing with Herbs Luft, but it doesn't have to be. I could very easily rewrite this config file, and instead of doing it as a bash script, I could actually rewrite it as a Python script. Uh, really, within a few minutes, I can probably rewrite this config file as a Python script if I, that's what I preferred to do. I mean, matter of fact, I could probably just rewrite it in Haskell if I really wanted to do that. Now, I wouldn't want to do that because a lot of you guys use my configs, and you know, if I rewrote it in something just crazy off the wall like Haskell, you know, some of you guys would be upset so I would never you know do anything if, if I was going to do a herbs luft config I the only thing I would consider if it wasn't shell scripting would be python but the config file it is very simple when you go grab a default config most of this stuff actually here in my config is many of the defaults I changed some of the key bindings I added a few variables of my own the main thing is this particular file is called auto start so it's hey what do you want to launch when the window manager first loads and one of the things you want to launch is x set root uh, this sets your root window it also tells the root window uh, it sets the color of the root window pycom is my compositor so that sets uh, pycom to start so i have transparency and shadowing and things like that helps prevent screen tearing it's good to have a compositor running on your standalone window managers i also have nitrogen dash dash restore uh, set here 
here. And that's, of course, to draw my wallpaper because, you know, everybody wants nice wallpaper on the screen. So that's what I'm using to draw my wallpaper. And then, you know, I, I set some other variables. This is just for me. This was not originally in the config, but, you know, I went ahead and set mod to mod 4. So every time I have mod in, uh, appear in the config, it's really mod 4, which is the super key. And the reason you, you set a variable for mod is because if for some reason you want to change from the super key to like the alt key for some reason, because sometimes, you know, I'll try out uh, tiling window managers in VMs or in Zephyr, and you would have some conflicts if the tiling window manager you're using on the host machine has the super key as the mod key and the VM has a tiling window manager also using the super key, you'll have some weird conflicts. So sometimes you'll want to change the mod key in one of those tiling window managers. And you don't want to go and change a hundred different instances of mod four in this config, because that's what all of these would be. No, you just mod equals mod four. And if you ever need to change it to the alt key, you just change mod equals mod one. And now mod, every instance of mod in this config is actually the alt key. And that way it really saves you a lot of time if you ever have to make that change. Some other things I like to set in all of my window manager configs, I usually like to have a variable set for my terminal. In this case, I set my term equals alacrity, the alacrity terminal. And then I also like to set my preferred text editor, which right now I'm using Emacs. So I set my editor to the Emacs client. So that's the, when the Emacs daemon is running the Emacs server, my Emacs starts as client windows. Now, one of the interesting things with Herbs Luft is if I actually switch views here. So I have a triple monitor setup, And one of the really cool things that Herbs Luft is able to do that a lot of other tiling window managers, they're able to do too, but sometimes you have to jump through some major hoops to configure it this way, is your monitors as far as monitors and screens. And that's not necessarily always the same thing. When I talk about monitors versus screens, when I talk about monitors, I'm talking about physically, I have three monitors. But when I'm talking about screens, I don't necessarily have to divide up the three monitors into three screens. I could have three monitors, but I could have six screens. I mean, I, I could have where monitor one is actually really two different screens. You know, you, you can do that kind of stuff with Herb Sluft. Uh, you're not limited on, you know, how you divide up the screen. Now, on a multi-monitor system, it makes sense every monitor to be its own screen. So that's what I did in my config. If I actually go down toward the bottom of my config, let me uh, capital G here and do me max to get to the bottom of the screen. You see, I set my monitors here. How you do this is you set the monitor resolution, and I did 1920 by 1060, and you're going to say, well, shouldn't that be 1920 by 1080? Well, I left 20 pixels of screen real estate for polybar at the top of the screen. So that's why all of my monitors are set to 1920 by 1060, and then the position that they're on the screen and zero plus 22 is the first monitor 1920 plus 22 is the second monitor and 3840 plus 22 is the third monitor and so that is how you set your monitor resolution plus what screen they're on here in urbis luft really i could divide that up any way i wanted to now, it doesn't make sense. Again, on, on a multi-monitor system, you're, most people, 99% of the time, are just going to want each monitor to be its own screen. But what happens if you only have one gigantic monitor? Uh, you know, one of these gigantic ultra-wides that have become very popular. Like you got a 47-inch ultra-wide monitor. Having that thing as one screen makes no sense, right? Really, you probably want to divide that up almost like it's a triple monitor setup. And how you do that is exactly how I did here. You just divide up that one monitor and whatever kind of chunks you want. And, and that makes a lot more sense uh, than trying to have that gigantic, almost TV-like monitor as all one workspace, because really it's not going, you're not going to be happy with that kind of setup. You really want to divide that up into two, probably three different screens, depending on the size of that ultra wide. Now I had mentioned that I was using Polybar as my panel here in Herbs Luft. Now by default, I think if you 
or just using a standard default config, or if you're not, if you don't create your own config at all, Urbis Luft assumes that you're probably using the DZEN panel, D-Z-E-N. And I have used the DZEN panel in the past and years past on other window managers. It used to be kind of common for open box users. They used to use the DZEN panel, but you guys know in my open box configs, I like the Tent2 panel. So I didn't have DZEN already installed on my system when I installed Herbs Luft, but I did have Polybar because I was using Polybar with other window managers. I was using Polybar and i3. I was using Polybar and BSPWM. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to use Polybar. And Polybar works just fine. Uh, for my panel, you see at the end of my config, I have this section here, find the panel. And all it does is run this shell script. You know, panel equals and then the path to this shell script, panel.sh. That launches my polybar with the modules that are needed, the polybar modules that are needed to, you know, correctly name the workspaces and the X window title and then the widgets here to the right. Speaking of workspaces, let me get back to the triple monitor view here. So what are you guys are viewing here is monitor one on workspace one. And then monitor two, that's got Emacs open, is on workspace two. And then monitor three is actually right now on workspace eight. That is my workspace dedicated to OBS and recording video. That is usually where all that stuff gets pushed. So I've got three different monitors. They're on three different workspaces. And all the workspaces are shared amongst the monitors. So you only have one set of workspaces. So in a lot of ways, I like that because that is very similar to the way uh, Xmonad and Qtile do workspaces. And you guys know those are my favorite window managers. I spent, I've spent years in Xmonad and Qtile both. And so I really like the fact that Herbs Luft is like this, that it only has the one set of workspaces and they're shared across all the monitors and it does do the swapping. So if I'm on workspace two on monitor two right now, if I wanted to switch to workspace eight, which is currently on monitor three, watch what happens. You know, they swap places. So monitor two now becomes workspace eight and because mon uh, workspace two was on monitor two, it actually goes to monitor three. I hope that makes sense. Let me switch back monitor two to workspace two. And you, once again, you see the workspaces, they just swap monitors. And that can be kind of confusing to people that are not used to using window managers that have that kind of functionality. I'm used to it though, and I prefer that. That's the way I like multi-monitors to work. It's one of the reasons why I've been such a big fan of Xmonad forever is because it's one of the few window managers that really does that. Uh, there's a couple of others. Qtile is one and Spectre WM is one. Going back to the dead simple configuration file. So Herbs Luft has a command line function called the Herbst client or HC for short. And what you do is in the config file, you call upon that particular program, HC, and then whatever you want HC to do. For example, I want HC to run this command, keybind, and then the keybinding, and then the command for the keybinding. So HC, keybind, mod shift Q, quit. What does that do? It makes uh, the Herbst client keybind mod shift plus Q to run this command, quit, which is quitting out of Herbs Luft WM. I hope that makes sense. And that's all you need to do for your, your key bindings is HC key bind, then the key binding, and then the command to actually run for the key binding. And you know some of the other key bindings include things like swapping focus of monitors and windows, and it's all done with HJKL, the Vim motion keys. I also set it to also use up, down, left, and right if you want to do the arrows as well. Either one works. Of me personally, I always use HJKL, but I like adding the uh, double key bindings so that the arrow keys also work for those that go and grab my configs later and want to use the arrow keys. Now, I mentioned earlier that Herbs Luft is a manual tiler. And what I mean is, where is the next window going to open on this screen? I'm actually not sure. So I'm going to open a terminal. And it looks like by default, it's going to open at the bottom. So let me close that terminal. Super Shift C will close the terminal for me. Now, I can tell Herbs Luft exactly where I want the next window to open. So if I go down in my config here, you see HC keybind mod U splits the bottom. And then HC keybind mod O splits the right. So mod plus U splits to the bottom, mod O splits to the right. So if I do mod O right now, you see 
I have an empty space to the right of the window that I was on. Now if I do super L to actually move over to the right, you know, I'm actually in that empty space. And now when I do super enter to open a window or to open a terminal, I'm in that empty space. And then I could do mod U to split to the bottom. And then I could do mod J to go ahead and move down. And then I could, you know, run something, or maybe a D menu and then open something. I don't know. We'll just open up Thunar again since I opened it earlier. And to close that window, Super Shift C. Now I still have the empty space that I had created before. Mod R would remove that space. Same thing here. I could close that window and then I still have the empty frame here. It's waiting for another window to be put there or I could just Mod R to get rid of the empty frame. Workspace names, let's talk about that. So they're really tags, not workspaces. And the tag names, you see, I gave them actual names, uh, the same names I give my workspaces in Xmonad and Awesome and Qtile and everything else. And then the tag keys, now this is the key binding. So mod plus one through nine. Mod one through nine controls the nine workspaces that I listed in tag names. And because this is a shell script, I mean, I, I could get creative here. I mean, I could have these names dynamically uh, created if I wanted to in some way. Uh, I'm, I'm really, the sky's the limit what you can do with, with a script, with a shell script or a Python script. For me, I just want to have nine workspaces all the time, the same nine workspaces. So I, I really didn't do anything too cute here. Looking a little bit further through the config, you do have some theming options as far as colors, border colors. Uh, by default, there is a frame around the entire monitor or the entire screen. Now, I turn that off because I don't always want a border around my windows. I don't want a border around an empty workspace, and that would be how it is by default. I also don't want a border around a, a single window, so I just turn the, the borders off. You know, I only want the border around the window with focus. Uh, if it doesn't have focus, I, I don't really need it. So let me open up a terminal. I'm going to zoom in here and I just want to show you the man page for WM because WM probably has the best man page of any window manager I've ever seen. It's I'm going to page down. It's a lengthy man page, but it is well organized and well written, very clear instructions like this. Every single thing that's listed here is an option that could be put in your config, for example, and it makes configuring Herbs Luft just a breeze because you don't have to go search through a million pages of documentation on some website, look for all these extra modules and extra libraries you have to add to a config. You just open up the man page because all the extra options and everything are already kind of built into Herbs Luft. All you need to do is add it to that auto start script that you're writing, you know, the shell script or whatever it is you're writing it in Python or any other language. So I started playing with Herbs Luft again uh, about two nights ago. You know, I logged back into it for the first time and forever. And I was like, yeah, this is nice. This, I, I remembered really liking Herbs Luft. And when I logged back into it a couple of nights ago, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay in it. I'm going to stay in it a while. At least another week or two like I did the first time around, maybe a month. I don't know. I may not stay in it full time like and you know you I'm always logging into different window managers and things but for the most part I'm going to try to actually do my work you know the work I do that I spend hours a day doing like the content on the channel I'm going to do all that using Herbs Luft WM just to get acclimated to using this particular window manager because I for one thing I think it deserves attention I don't think this particular tiling window manager gets the attention that so many others get right i3 and bspwm they're very popular window managers they get a ton of coverage but you know there's other tiling window managers out there that I think don't get the same kind of shine and, and I want to highlight some of them and Herbs Luft definitely deserves the coverage now, before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank Michael, Gabe, Haplo, Nate, Corbinian, Mitchell, Entropy, UK, John, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Lewis, Omri, Paul, Robert, Sean, Tobias, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of the show. They are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. This is all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, you'll see DT over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.